Well, hey there, folks. So this is going to be an outside tour of the uh, 93 Fleetwood Terry Travel Trailer. The last video I did was the inside, so I had to do this one during the daytime so you could actually see it. So everything out here is pretty much original. The only thing that I'm going to personally do with it is I'm going to repaint the stripes all the way around it. Because, in case you didn't know, this aluminum, um, it's, it's actually called mason metal. This aluminum cladding here. Uh, this is, uh, this is all, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, where they bake it in the oven. My brain's just not uh, powder coated. So this stuff's all powder coated. This will shine up just fine. But these stripes, this is actual paint and it's faded. So I will retouch that. But anyways, let's go on our tour of the outside here. So, here you go in the front. I'm going to go ahead and walk around the whole thing. And for the year, I think this is an absolutely excellent condition. Like I said on my interior video, um, the roof really sold me on it. No leaks or anything, but just the just the overall shape of it. Okay, so. There's a walk around to the outside. Um, just have the manual tongue jack. There's no reason for me to have an electric one. It's easy enough to operate. Um, it has the two larger cylinders. I believe these are 30 pound tanks. You can correct me if I'm wrong. Have a new cover on there. This did have one battery when I bought it. I went ahead and installed two on there. Um, I didn't go with two six volts. I just went with two regular 12 volts. Um, I buy all my batteries from Walmart and I get good service out of them. Uh, the car batteries come with a free, a three year free replacement. And these marine batteries are deep cycles because people really abuse them. And a lot of people don't know how to maintain them. They only come with a one year warranty, but, uh, I've had them before and they've lasted me several years. I did go ahead and make this bracket here to secure the batteries and to, you know, slow down some you know tweaker who might want to try to take them um, i did install a battery disconnect switch there so that kills power to the whole camper right there and of course it does have a does have a seven-way outlet like most you know most would have um, it does have brakes on both axles and i do use a weight distribution uh, hitch while towing this there's, there's one of my tow vehicles there, the other one's over there in the driveway, and they both, both have a hitch on them. Okay, uh, here's the cover for the front window here. Let me go ahead and open that up, and I'll show you under there. Okay, so here we are with that open. You can see it has a solid window up top, and these two windows here actually crank out, which are pretty cool. So that's what that looks like under there. I'm doing this all by myself, so I have to pause the video, folks. But in case you're wondering, when this is down, these pins secure it on each side. That way, the wind doesn't catch it and it blow up all your blows up all your traveling. Okay, start over here. So here's your water heater here, Atwood six gallon, pretty pretty standard stuff right there. Just in case you're wondering, the Atwood doesn't require an anode rod. Your, sub your Suburban uh, water heater does. The difference is the Suburban has a uh, still tank. The Atwood uses an aluminum tank. So if you do have a Suburban, make sure to put an anode rod in. It would go in here. Mine just has a cap since it's an Atwood. Um, it's a sacrificial anode rod. If you're not sure what that is, look it up. Basically, the minerals and the hard water will attack that before it attacks your, your uh, still tank and destroys it. 
So this here is for your water tank here. Um, in the other video I showed the water tank is under the front couch or bed. So this is where you would fill your, uh, your water tank at right here. This here is for your city water connection. So if you were to stay at a park with you know hookups and you have a hose, you could hook in there and you can run off of that. It would pressurize it. But this holds a good amount of water. Um, here's a little storage area here. Hold on and I'll open that up. Okay, so here's that compartment opened up. And I'm pretty sure these uh, these aluminum um, clips that hold the doors open probably came on here from the factory. Nowadays, they're pretty much all plastic. But just a little, little storage area in there. A little utility area. And I did put lights in each one of these areas here. Just a little battery-operated light right here. So at nighttime, you can just flip that up and uh, lights it up for you in there. Okay, so this window here is in the front there by the by the couch or the front bed. And this is considered um, an emergency window. So this whole thing will open. So, you know, if something were to happen, you could escape out of there. Here's the window here by the kitchen sink. The top there is uh, fixed. The bottom here actually cranks out. There's your vent for the uh, range, range top vent there. That's a new vent I put in there. Here's the back side of the refrigerator vent. Uh, air comes in through here and it exhausts out the top up there off the vent on the roof. Um, if you had a, a coach with a slide out or maybe a pop-up camper or something, um, you may be used to seeing two of these vents. One would be here and one would be a little higher up. But when they do have access to the roof, that is the best way to do it. So the hot air can go out the top. So this here's your connection to go ahead and plug into shore power. Um, 120 volt, uh, 30 amp supply in there. It's got a plenty long cord in there. Here's your exhaust for your furnace, for your heater, you know, to heat the inside of the camper. Um, here's a utility light here. And this is obviously for if you need to dump your tanks and it's dark. Um, I did uh, upgrade all three of the exterior lights here and put LED bulbs in them and new housings on there. So here's your valves here. The small one there, that's your gray water. And this one here, that's your black tank. Black tanks for the toilet, gray water's for the sink, um, the shower, you know, bathroom sink, all of that stuff. Black tank is only for the toilet. So as you can see, there's a Y there. They both go into one. You have two separate valves, so when you dump that, you keep your gray valve closed, you open your black valve, you dump your black tank all the way out, close it, then you dump your gray, and your gray will rinse your hose out. So that's how you go about doing that there. Um, it has uh, newer tires all the way around. Uh, these were put on by the pre by actually by the original owner. I got this from the original owner who bought it brand new in 1993 and he took really good care of it. Uh, these are Vanguard STR. Uh, there are 205, 75, 15, and they're a load range D. This camper came with a load range C, calls for load range C, but uh, he did put D's on here. And if I was going to, you know, buy new tires for it, I would definitely have a D-range uh, tire on his here as well. I'm trying to see where they say load range D. I know they do. Well, if I see that, I'll show it to you prob probably on the other side. And these are not bias ply. These are um, a radial tire. And as you can see, it has a good amount of ground clearance to it. And at first, when I first bought this, I thought they had, you know, done an axle flip where they put the axle um, underneath the leaf spring to raise it up because it does have a good amount of ground clearance. But apparently, uh, this is factory because I looked under there and the axles are still on top of the leaf springs. So 
So this is obviously a factory configuration and it's a very, you know, decent uh, height off the ground. And uh, keeps your dump valves and everything, you know, pretty high off the ground. Um, it does have stabilizers on all four corners. You've got these bells on the rear here. And then you've got uh, these ones on the front right there. Uh, here's your drain for the water tank. This will empty the water tank. And then your low point drains um, there and here. Let's open this back up. And they're right there. So that's to drain out your all your lines when you go to winterize it. Okay, that's about everything over here. It's a small camper, so there's really not a whole lot to see. Oh, and there's the antenna for the AM FM stereo up there. Okay, here's these older campers uh, had bumpers on them. A lot of the new ones don't. But this is nice because you can store your... your uh, your hose in there to empty your tanks, which is referred to as the stinky slinky. Um, I'm not going to open this. This is just an outside shower. Basically have a regular faucet in there, hot and cold, with a shower handle, and it can hang up there. So if you're dirty and you want to shower outside, you can. Um, I did buy a brand new spare wheel and tire, tire cover. Um, all the lights around, all every one of them work. They're all in good condition. And then on this side here, um, here's your awning here. The awning works. It's in good shape. Um, it's not perfect, but there's no tears or anything in it. It's just weathered a little bit on the top, but it's not ripped or, or anything like that. It's just a little discolored up there. There's the model there. It's a Terry 19E. Let me pause this real quick and I'll be back to you. Okay, so here's the one and only entry door back here. You got your steps here. Nothing power or fancy. So there's your entry steps right there. And, uh, Stick those back up. But they just slide on in there. So here's a window where the dining table is here. Just a regular slide window like a house. Here's another window on the other side where the front couch bed is. Just slides open like a house there. Uh, Here's, here's 120 outside in case you want to plug some stuff into it there, 120 volts. And I'll show you what I got going on in this little storage area here. All right, so there we go. Got another aluminum clip. And uh, this is underneath the front part of the dinette. And it's the hole uh, where the cushion for the booth is. So there's quite a bit of room in there. Put another light in here. So nighttime you can have light. And uh, keep the bars for the weight distribution hitch and the uh, sway control and, you know, a bunch of other stuff I may need in here. Of course, matching tires over here. Um, he must have had something happen to the wheel over here because this one wheel doesn't... I mean, it's the same design and everything, but it, you can see it's wider and it has the blue and red stripes around it, pinstripes. So... Even though it's basically the same wheel, it looks a little different. At some point, I'll go ahead and paint all four of them. But it's got the same matching tires on all, on all four there. And you can see on this side, I keep it locked up so someone can't drive away with it. And I told you I'd show you where it says Load Range D if I found that. There you go, Load Range D. So all, all four of these tires are upgraded one Load Range. Um, of course, you got the same crank down stabilizers on this side as you... Had on the other side there. I went ahead and replaced this light up here, this patio light. That's LED as well. And I replaced this one here. LED, they're all the same. But basically you can turn this one on. That way you can see what you're doing when you're hooking up out here. If you have to fiddle with the batteries or the propane or anything like that. 
Um, all these clearance lights on here, they're, they're either all original or they've been replaced with the original Fleetwood lights. I'm leading toward they've probably been replaced with the originals because they're all in really good condition. And that's the only reason I don't swap them out to LED. Um, they're plenty bright, they're clean, the reflectors, you know, they have the reflectors in them. I'm just going to leave them be. And, you know, it's a it's just your standard A&E awning. But anyways, that's pretty much the outside tour of it. There's not a whole lot to see. Um, I got my ladder in the backyard in the shed right now. Otherwise, I'd go up there and show you the roof. I totally redid the roof. Um, I used a Turnabond web seal tape around all the vent, front and rear cap. Uh, basically, wherever there's, you know, a, a seam, a chance for a leak anywhere, I went ahead and used a Turnabond web seal. And then I coated the entire roof with, uh, with a uh, product made for rubber roofs. And uh, I put three coats on. Turned out really well. Um, the roof has never leaked in here, as you can see by the previous video. But, you know, just a precaution, I'm real picky about stuff. And I just wanted to make sure everything was done right. And I didn't have any problems in the future. Go ahead and give you a quick view of underneath. You can see it's really clean under here. It's not all rusted out. It's an excellent condition. And both of those axles, not sure if I mentioned it, they have brakes on both axles. So there's two brakes per axle, a total of four, and they really stop this trailer nicely. Okay, folks, so I hope you enjoyed the tour of the outside of the 93 Fleetwood Terry 19E. Um, the only thing I'm going to do to the outside of this camper is I'm going to paint the stripes, like I said. And on this front fiberglass cover for the, the rock um, cover for the window, I'm going to tape all that off and I'll repaint that. Um, other than that, everything's going to stay alone. Um, I like that it's, you know, factory and it looks real nice. And let me point out one other thing. These uh, fender flares right here, they get weathered and they crack and basically turn to dust. When I bought it, they were in real bad shape. So, these weren't cheap. Um, they're made by IconDirect.com right there. You can go online. I believe I believe they, they come out of Canada. I think that's where they're manufactured. But, um, you know, they make um, replicas for your OEM um, fender flares for your camper. You know, whether it's a single axle, dual axle, triple axle, uh, travel trailer, motorhome, fifth wheel. Um, they've got most of them. Um, like I say, these weren't cheap. These were $168 each. Yes, I paid $160 each for these. But, you know, I wanted it to look right. So that's why I went ahead and got those. And here's that other matching one on the other side right there. I thought about, uh, you know, because I had the, one of them was all broken. The other one was still intact. So I thought about possibly getting some marine grade plywood, you know, um, marking it out, cutting it, you know, sanding it, and, you know, possibly building up two layers and trying to do the same contour as this. And then, you know, maybe use a fiberglass resin and paint it or do something. I probably could have made it look pretty darn good. But for I probably could have made it look just as good as this but for all the labor and my time and the mess it would have made I figured it's just better off to buy these and I'm, I'm glad I did I mean it probably would have taken me a long time to do all that but anyways folks thanks for watching if you like this video give me a thumbs up and uh that's why I bought this camper, because it was an extremely clean, original example of what it's supposed to be. And um, it's half-ton towable. And I wanted to be able to tow it with my existing vehicles, and I can. I've got my 2000 Ford Expedition 5.4 liter 2-valve. It's got the 4R100 transmission in it. Same as the early uh, 7.3 power strokes tows it great and then here's my other tow vehicle 2001 Ford F-150 Super Crew 
also has a 5.4 liter V8. And uh, this one has the, the other transmission. I forgot the, the, the model number. It's the same one they used in all these F-150s and the Crown Victorias and stuff like that. But they both tow it excellent, excellent no problems whatsoever. And um, let me talk about the weight distribution hitch real quick. So just real, real quick about the weight distribution hitch. The camper already included one. I bought another drop shank, the head and the ball for my F-150 there. So I can use either one. I bought electric uh, brake controllers for both vehicles. So we're ready to go. Everything's set right. And this camper is light enough where I don't need a weight distribution hitch for either vehicle. Um, you know, these vehicles, they state they can haul 500 pound tongue weight, 5,000 pound trailer weight without the weight distribution hitch. Once you go above that, you do need a weight distribution hitch. However, towing this home with my 2000 Expedition, it towed it just fine because it has the factory air ride, levels everything out, work great. But you can definitely, you know, feel it when you hit a bump going like that. You know it's back there. With the weight distrib distribution hitch, um, it makes such a big difference. Honestly, you don't even know the camper's back there when you're driving. When you brake, you don't know it's back there because the brakes work so well. The only time you know it's back there is when you look in your side view, your rear view mirrors, or you're going up a hill, like getting on an on-ramp or something, or, you know, climbing a mountain, then you definitely know it's there. But other than that, it rides so nice with that weight distribution hitch. Um, I would recommend anyone uh, use one, you know, unless you have a super light trailer. But if you're, you know, anywhere close to your, you know, the limits without it, get one. You'll be amazed at how good it tows. Okay, I'm done preaching. Y'all have a good one. Hope you liked the video. See you next time.